This is the Dollamore Daily. Hi, I'm Mike Greiner from the Democratic Activist Channel, and I'm sitting in for Jesse while he's finishing up his move from California to D.C. We're wishing Jesse good luck in that move, of course, and looking forward to him coming back. But in the meantime, let's talk politics. And the big news today is that Fannie Willis, a district attorney from Atlanta, has announced that she is nearing a decision about bringing charges against Donald Trump and his colleagues for their efforts to overturn the election results in Georgia. Willis, an experienced prosecutor, has reportedly appointed a team of up to 10 people in her office to examine this situation. The team includes lawyers, investigators, and a paralegal, and they have access to outside experts to explore the potential legal ramifications of the actions by Donald Trump. So the basis of this investigation, of course, come primarily from the phone call that Donald Trump made to Republican Secretary of State of Georgia Brad Raffensperger, basically threatening him and urging him to find 11,780 votes, enough votes that would have allowed Trump to win the election, despite the fact that all indications were that Biden won the election by a pretty substantial margin. To give Raffensperger and Brian Kemp, the governor of Georgia, also a Republican credit, they stood behind the vote of the people, saying clearly that this is a state that was won by Biden despite the claims that Trump was making. Let's listen to a little bit of this call here. We have won this election in Georgia based on all of this. And there's, there's nothing wrong with, with saying that, Brad. You know, I mean, having, the, having a correct, you, the people of Georgia are angry. And these numbers are going to be repeated on Monday night, along with others that we're going to have by that time, which are much more substantial even. And the people of Georgia are angry. The people of the country are angry. And there's nothing wrong with saying that, you know, uh, that you've recalculated. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. You should want to have an accurate election. And you're a Republican. We believe that we do have an accurate election. No, I no, you don't. No, no, you don't. You don't have. You don't have. Not even close. You got. You're off by hundreds of thousands of votes. You know what they did, and you're not reporting it. That's a. You know that's a criminal. That's a criminal offense. And and you know you can't let that happen. That's that's a big risk to you and to Ryan, your lawyer. That's a big risk. But they are shredding ballots, in my opinion based on what I've heard, and they are removing machinery, uh, and they're moving it as fast as they can, both of which are criminal fines, and you can't let it happen, and you are letting it happen. Oh, you know, I mean, I'm notifying you that you're letting it happen. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. So so tell me, Brad, what are we going to do? We won the election, and it's not fair to take it away from us like this. And it's going to be very costly in many ways. And I think you have to say that you're going to reexamine it, and you can reexamine it, but, but reexamine it with people that want to find answers, not people that don't want to find answers. Uh, for instance, I'm hearing Ryan, and he's probably, I'm sure, a great lawyer and everything, but he's making statements about those ballots that he doesn't know. But he's making them with such, he, he did make them with surety, but now I think he's less sure because the answer is they all went to Biden. And that alone wins us the election by a lot. You know, so. Mr. President, uh, you have people that submit information and we have our people that submit information and then it comes before the court and the court then has to make a determination. We have to stand by our numbers. We believe our numbers are right. Trump's call to Raffensperger, though, is not the only example of an effort by Trump or one of his cronies to overturn the result of the election. We have Chief of Staff Mark Meadows leading a procession of officials, including Secret Service agents, through the facility where they're counting the votes in a recount of the election, essentially looking over the shoulders of the people counting the votes and making them feel intimidated. We have the surprising resignation 
of the U.S. attorney from Atlanta on January 4th of 2021 and Trump's rapid appointment of somebody who didn't even work in that office to take his place. Why did that happen so quickly? There's also the efforts by Rudy Giuliani, the president's attorney, to lobby state legislators to try to appoint a different slate. Statements at rallies attacking Governor Brian Kemp and State Attorney General Chris Carr, another Republican, for not just handing the election to him. And then, of course, you have the call from Senator Lindsey Graham, a Trump toady, asking Raffensperger to throw out whole groups of absentee ballots in Fulton County, a heavily Democratic county. These actions by Trump and his cronies present a substantial legal risk to the president according to analysis done by the nonpartisan Brookings Institution, by a group of seven experienced attorneys from both sides of the political aisle. According to the report, charges could include criminal solicitation to commit election fraud, intentional interference with performance of election duties, conspiracy to commit election fraud, racketeering, and violations of more than a dozen other state statutes. Stated simply, Soliciting and then threatening senior state officials to alter the outcome of a presidential election does not fall with any reasoned conception of the scope of presidential power. Now, that's an important point to make because, of course, the defense that Trump is going to make is that it falls within his privilege to do this. And the point that these attorneys were making is that this in no way falls within his privilege and is no way part of the president's duties. In fact, the president should have nothing to do with the state vote in a presidential election. Now, like many of us, I'm getting frustrated with the amount of time it's taking to put together a case against Trump, whether it be by Attorney General Merrick Garland, whether it be by the Manhattan District Attorney who's looking at some of his activities as a business person before he ran for president, or whether it's Prosecutor Fannie Willis. But what we have to understand is that Trump is going to litigate anything that is brought against him forcefully, and he will have the resources and the lawyers to help him. These prosecutors want to make sure that all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed so they have nothing to worry about when they go to trial, that they know they have a solid bulletproof case that Trump and his lawyers aren't going to be able to destroy using all the resources that they have available to them. This kind of effort will take time. And as Merrick Garland indicated in a speech that he gave, you start prosecutions with the people who are directly involved and move up. And that appears to be exactly what Prosecutor Fannie Willis in Georgia is doing right now. So let's keep our fingers crossed and look forward to the potential of some important announcement of charges being brought against Trump in really what is some of the most egregious violations of the law that he engaged in after the election. Well, if you agree with me or disagree with me, I'd love to see your comments down below. And if you could check out my channel, Democratic Activist, we'll link to that down below as well. I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, let's hope for continued progress. Thank you.